I'm on. Wow, first cast. Unbelievable. And that's a good one. So we're going to be hitting the lake today and doing some stupid stuff and catching some juicy LMBs. Where's that? That is the new Guggen Squad Guppy. By the way, if you guys want to pick up baits, some of them are going to be talking about in this video. You can go to GuggenSquad.com, use my promo code LFG at any time. So if you like some of the, the things I'm showing you, some colors, what have you. What do you got there, Ben? You got a piece of a pinner worm from yesterday's shaky head fishing he's gonna make it into two worms it's economical so last couple days decided to hit the lake one day we had a big storm come in it was kind of wild then it got super stagnant hot sunny nothing moving and this is what i discovered Shizzy boys, we're filled up to the gills here with water after that rain. That smallmouth came out and said, I want that crack bird! Couldn't decide. Like fickle women, those smallmouths. God, crankbaits just not work anymore. Like, what the hell happened? What the hell happened to our fishing world? There he is. There he is. I done got him. I done got him, boys. Is that bad? The bass. I knew we know, I knew we'd done be down there. It is still possible to catch a bass on a plug. Hard baits coming back. 2025, hard baits coming back, baby. Let's go. Make plugs fire again. cruise around right here and use the side imaging to try to locate something good. Snacky swimmer strikes again. Go bam. Snacky. There's a little guy on a 10 inch worm. Appears to be a couple of ham hammers in here. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh. Oh my 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 gosh, what did I just hook on a tasty tube? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, folks. I mean, finesse of finesse. This is bad, I got, I got light, light, light stuff. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I think we got ourselves a large bias here. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, man. Uh, it's not nearly as big as what I thought it was when I first saw it, but it is uh, quite sizable for the gear that I have. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy, man. Uh, I've never even fished here before. <laughs> never even fished here before, and I don't even think I've thrown this bait out here before. That's an absolute specimen of a largemouth bass right there. Look at that tube. Look at that tube, man. I put it on a, a, a stupid head, stupid rigging. I just popped it over a, a, a stubborn fish. I'd thrown a Mondo worm around a few times and just cracked it, man. That's so cool. That's a gorgeous fish, man. I'll tell you something cool about a tube on a light jig head like this. There's no splash. Like I'm throwing at these fish at, at 40 feet. They don't even care. Boys, I'm hooked up again. Another size. Light line, this thing's got it deep, man. I, I've never done anything like this. This is weird. This, this feels like, um, you know, I'm throwing a jig head minnow live scope. Like I'm, I'm seeing some fish on a flat that I've never fished before. And uh, dude, they're just coming out and, and tagging it. Like it's a, something they really want, dude. I think they think it's a crawfish. I think it's gone, guys. That thing is down the hatch. That is crazy. Uh. Uh. I mean, just look at that honker, dude. I mean, this is like two back-to-back -back five pounders. What are we doing here? I'm doing something really stupid. Throwing a just nougat, a little nougat. Ow. So that was weird catching those fish on the stupid rig, open water, suspended. They liked the fall. They liked when it hopped up like a crawfish. I had never done that before offshore. So had to go out the next day. I was testing out some, some new things. And I wanted to give it a try again to see if it was a fluke or not. There we go. Ah, off to a spotty start. Rag that off. Keep her fresh. All right, so we've been out here for five minutes. We already caught a fish. I like to I like to throw them plugs at first, man. You know, just all these lakes nowadays, guys, I don't know about you, but a lot of the areas that uh, I used to catch fish in, the fish are still there. They're just uh, they're just so much harder to catch and they they don't they don't eat the meat and potatoes as much now. Or um, you gotta just really search for offshore candy, just something that nobody else is finding. Fish are gonna get on you know, those typical areas like docks and bridges and anywhere that there's good current and bait, that the fish are not gonna stray away from that because of there's a lot of fishermen around. It's just, they're gonna get more selective about what they're biting. So we have re-rigged. I've got uh, the same color, which is Gobi right here, three and a half inch. This is the, uh, the dupe tube. And the way that this is rigged, it's got a, uh, an eighth ounce head in it. And I really think that eighth ounce head made that difference the other day. So that's part of the, what I want to check. But mostly I think it's because of the way it falls and the way it pops up and looks like a crawl. Cause I noticed 
a lot of the bluegill were attacking this thing like it was a crawfish, trying to rip its pinchers off. And the way it would just fall down like a crawfish had scooted up and it was just falling back to the bottom, uh, the bass really seemed to like it. So got a high pressure spot, just popped one on a crankbait. I know there's more bass there, they're not biting. Um, so now we're gonna deploy this guy right here, see if we can get bit. And what I'm sort of thinking is this might be a really cool forward bait Come on. Wow, first cast. Unbelievable. And that's a good one. Oh my gosh. Literally first cast. There is something to this. Oh, what do we got here? What are you? You're kind of scaring me. I got this light line. Oh, you're just a, you're just an average run in the mill. But I got this light line. I can't play around. Now that one actually got it off of the bottom. Let's boat flip this guy. Uh, he actually got it off the bottom. I was dragging it right there. Look at that. Just perfectly pegged. And it's such a cool rig for. Uh, fishing this particular lake that I'm at because it's got a lot of a lot of rock and it has some brush piles in it so the way that this tube is tucked in with that jig head you get a nice weedless presentation beautiful run in the mill healthy 15 inch bass I didn't invent this rig and uh, Guggen Squad didn't invent this this jig head um, this is the stupid jig head right here and this has been around for a while. I, I wish I could remember the guy's name, credit the guy's name that came up with it, but it's, uh, it's very popular in the Midwest. If, uh, a lot of you guys that are watching in the Midwest, you probably already know about this. But if you're down south, you might want to pay attention because this, this could be a real uh, fish catcher for you that I promise you is not getting a whole lot of attention. Um, and it came, it came about in smallmouth waters, fishing around cover, you know, smallmouth lub tubes um, and the traditional rigs to put a jig head inside there. You put your round jig head in there and then the, the hook sticks out and you're pretty much guaranteed uh, a hook set on a fish if it eats it. However, you're gonna get snagged up a bunch. And when I started going up to Canada every year and, and fishing a lot of thick boulders and rocks, uh, I discovered these um, stupid tube rigs and it just, it saves you so much money and tackle and time. Um, but the way that it falls, that is very interesting. And again, light jig head, light. It's a pain in the butt. If it's windy, it's just a tasty little morsel. And look how that hook just tucks, tucks in on that dupe tube. So we've got these ribs on here and you can just texpose it right there. It's perfect. And the fish eats it, pops out, but it maintains that low profile and uh, you don't get hooked, hooked on cover near as much. So literally first cast. Oh my gosh, the bluegill are crushing it. It's just amazing that to get that many bluegill hits in a spot like that too, where they don't, they don't hit a worm or that crankbait near as much. This thing just has a natural crawfish look that they like. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Absolutely ate the entire bait off of that. I let them, let them kind of chew on it for a minute. But since we lost a bait, let me show you, uh, how to rig it up. All right, tube box. Let's go with that same color. Oh, you know what? We do have a semi-shad color. This is natural. That right there is uh, one of my favorite imitators for bluegill, green pumpkin pearl. Let's stick with that goby since they really seem to like it. All right, so what you're gonna do is cut your line. Cut your line to rig on the tube. I know, it sounds counterintuitive. This is just kind of how, how you have to do it. That's very, really rare to have a fish just like take that thing off of there. Usually you can roll with one for many fish. So I'm gonna take the hook point and I'm gonna go up through the bottom here and I'm gonna come out about a, I'm gonna say about a half inch. There's that first rib section and that's what I'm gonna 
come out right behind that on this three and a half. So I'm gonna pull that in, I'm gonna rotate it. All right, so now the, the line tie is gonna pop out of the top of this bait. I'm just gonna pull it a little bit. Boop, and it pops right out. There's our line tie. And then from there, you're gonna go through the whole bottom and the whole top of the tube. And where I just showed you guys where to come out on the bottom, for this particular tube, this three and a half, that's the perfect little spot, the right behind that first big rib on this tube tube, and then it takes your, your hook point on this, uh, this eighth ounce and it tucks it just perfectly right behind that, that first big rib there. So that keeps it really weedless. I didn't plan that. The way we design these ribs, it just kind of works out with this jig head. Now we tie our jig head back on. Now for my setup here, because it's light, I've got I've got eight pound fluoro going to ten pound braid, and I've got this on uh, one of our black series finesse rods. This thing is ultra light, and uh, my buddy John B actually stepped on the end of it. This is my favorite wacky worming rod, and it broke, and so I replaced it with a gold series butt, which is actually a little heavier, and now it is perfectly balanced for doing what I'm doing right now. So uh, not saying you should break the ends of your rods off, but it just so happens that I rigged this one out perfectly where it's amazing balance and sensitivity. So caught a stubborn fish right off the bat and then thought I could go around the whole lake and do it. And I was, I went around and fished everything. I fished not just the tube rig, but I fished a whole bunch of stuff all over the lake. I could not get a bit. And watching forward, all the fish were just dead. They were, they were not moving at all. They didn't want to chase anything until end of the day. Oh, one last chance, man. These fish have been in a state of death out here. Not moving, not wanting it at all. <clears throat> See if we can bop one on a moving bait. I'm just, I mean, there's not even any top water. I see shad on, on the surface and they're not getting popped. Just bluebird stuff. There she is. There she is right there now. There she is on crankbait. There she is on crankbait. Don't come off. It feels like you're going to come off. Got that glass rod on you now. Oh gosh, that's a good one there. That's the old ham sandwich. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think you got it sideways in your mouth. You're spitting stuff out. Oh. Well, y'all. Not ending it on a uh, on a stupid bite. It's kind of a logical bite. I was beginning to wonder. I was like, are there any crankbait fish left? I think there are. There's a few. There's a few pluggers out there. Uh, come here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, boy. Oh yeah. Here's a good one, man. Uh, he had it down the hatch. Man, this is a, it's one of my favorite colors ever out here. I had one of my best days ever on this lake on this color. And it's usually in the fall and in the early spring when it's cold. It's recon in a little like root beer craw color. That fish has been caught plenty of times, probably in a derb or two, but I bet you he's never been sniffed by me. Oh, I got a cold right now, so I can't smell him too good, but. That's a pretty good one there, boy. I mean, that's how it should be. Just roll up, roll up on the deal, first cast, get her done. So I was just making a couple more casts before it was getting dark, and then I heard a call for help. Help! Need help? All right. And they're lucky there wasn't a wind so that I could actually hear them and they weren't gonna drift all the way across the lake, but we towed them in and all was good. It was an adventure on the water. The stupid rig, the, the tubes, 
You know, I've been a fan of tubes for fishing a lot of different techniques, but not this. Like I've liked flipping tubes. Tube used to be my go-to rig, believe it or not, for fishing boat slips. I would throw that thing in there and, and twitch it around and it's pretty erratic. It's kind of like a shad. Um, and I've, I've always fished like a white one or a pearl one um, for shad. I'd, I'd like that in the fall too, flipping brush but never just throwing it out there for suspended fish uh, or offshore fishing, like deeper water and popping it up off the cover. And it really does look like a crawfish. Like when, you, when I was looking at it on forward, I was like, oh man, that weight, that, that the weight was I think very important in throwing that one eighth ounce, although it, it took forever to sink and you had to be patient with it. When you would pop it up, it would just have that natural fall like a craw would and it looked like it was kicking and it just had that profile, you know? So I think it's a, I think it's a really good technique and a forgotten bait uh, that still catches fish. Uh, it was known along with jigs um, for, for winning tournaments, for catching big bags in tournaments, but it's kind of, it's kind of been forgotten over the last couple years, except for the Midwest and the Northern guys who know it's one of the ultimate smallmouth catchers. So if you want to pick up some dupe tubes, I was throwing the 3.5 inch. That's a perfect little size. We make a make a bunch of different sizes in them. Uh, don't forget, you can use my promo code at googlesquad.com, which is linked down below. If you want to check out more adventures Mom, Mom. with my little Mom, buddy, Mom. with the wife, Mom. the fam, Mom. the moving process, the adventures here and across the globe, Subscribe here to the channel and I'll see you guys on the next one.